My boyfriend Jason, 27 and male, and I, 23 and female, went on a month-long camping trip to multiple states. Everything had been going really well actually, all the way until October 9th at least. We decided to ditch a campground reservation and instead randomly pitch our tent near Albion Basin in the Uinta Mountains, Alta, Utah, not far off the trailhead. We parked our car around 3 p.m. at the Albion Basin campground. It was closed for the season. Admittedly, the atmosphere was a little bit tense because this was our first dispersed camping attempt and we had no proper backpacking gear. Upon arrival, we realized the area we wanted to pitch our tent in was about two miles uphill. At this point, we started to express regret. I was wondering why we had a planned campsite in Nephi, Utah that we decided to just skip on a whim. After grumping around a bit though and having a large lunch to avoid packing food, we packed our backpacks with the best gear we had to get going through the night as it was going to be 25 degrees Fahrenheit. We set out up the trail, seeing the occasional family or couple heading back down the mountain. As we trudged on further, we both started to feel a bit strange though. We didn't really even know why we were doing this. We could have just gotten a hotel instead of trying to play backpackers for the night, but we both felt like we had something to prove on our trip I guess, so we continued nonetheless. Fast forward and we finally made it up to Creekret Lake, totally empty, nothing like the pictures. It was actually kind of eerie how quiet it was, whatever. We kept hiking up and up in an attempt for seclusion and flat land when we finally stumbled upon a decent clearing. I could see a small cave in the distance. I pointed it out to Jason to see if it seemed like a good place to stay and check out. He said it seemed like a small animal crawl space, no biggie. We set up as nightfall was quickly approaching, played some cards, bundled up together, and decided to go to bed early around 8.30. We planned to leave as soon as possible in the morning, maybe 5 a.m. or so. We both settled down and eventually fell asleep, but after what felt like 30 minutes, I woke up abruptly at 11.24. I woke up with a feeling I'd never experienced before. I shot wide awake, scared but unprovoked. There was no way I was going to be able to fall back asleep, even though I could sleep anywhere and sleep through the night usually. Jason was still snoring though, so I let him be and just laid there, alert, trying to listen to anything I could make out. There was nothing. It was particularly silent. Around 30 minutes later, Jason woke up as well, much to my delight as I didn't want to be awake alone anymore. I told him I couldn't sleep. He suggested I just rest my eyes as we were leaving soon enough anyway. I didn't want to be a baby and say I was scared though. This was very short lived as Jason found himself unable to fall back asleep either. We ended up laying there together, just listening to the sounds of the night. Eventually I ended up blurting out that I was extremely scared. We agreed it was fine for us to just stick it through the night as now it was already 2.30. We had a small axe and a pellet gun for protection so he tried to reassure me I didn't need to be frightened. Not even five full minutes later though, we were still wide awake when Jason's head perked up so fast my heart nearly jumped out of my chest. What is it? I whispered. Shh, listen. I shit you not, I could hear the sound of gravel crunching on someone's boots as they walked around our tent, stopped, and then walked to the side I was sitting on. I felt the blood drain out of my face in an instant. In real time, this all occurred in no more than 10 seconds, but my mind flashed a million thoughts a millisecond. I was convinced it was a ranger coming to arrest us for camping here or something. I called out feebly. H hello I could hear the footsteps moving around us once more. Within two to three seconds of hearing this, Jason grabbed the gun and burst out of the tent for any chance to confront this person. We knew exactly what we were hearing, but there was nobody there. As soon as Jason got out of the tent, me bursting after him, there was nothing there. We'd heard someone walking around us so clearly, but somehow they'd managed to sneak away and hide in just a moment. 
Hardly exchanging two words, we packed up the stuff we could, looking over our shoulders terrified. We could feel we were being watched. We booked it back down the mountain, with only the moonlight guiding our way. We were too scared to turn off our flashlights. It was the worst 20 to 30 minutes of my life, half expecting to look over my shoulder and find some person stalking us through the woods. When we made it to our car, we locked the doors up first thing and started the descent out of the mountains, speechless and scared out of our minds. We reached town at about 3.30 and slept in a well-lit parking lot of a grocery store. We've obviously since discussed what happened that night and were both haunted by the memories of those footsteps. I once had a bit of a self-rescue I had to do in the Laramie Peak Range. I lost all my gear, map, and shelter in a windstorm. Took me a few days to get out, and had a couple of deeply unpleasant experiences along the way. This isn't that story though. It sucked ass, but it wasn't all that scary. I managed to keep a cool head. Typically, that's who I am. The person who stays calm in a crisis. I mention that to let you know how unusual this was to make me freak out and completely lose my cool. This time I had all my gear, but I just couldn't keep it together. There are a lot of cool little trails in Colorado, some well known to the public and some that you'd only know if you were a local. There are mountains and forests for days out there. In 2013 we got some torrential downpours in September. Along the eastern slope, it was squelchy as shit for a while, and a glorious mushrooming boom happened because of it. I love mushrooms. My favorite thing is foraging. My absolute favorite is Boletus rubriceps. The conditions weren't exactly right, but I thought, why not give it a shot, you know? The area I like to forage in, I say it did have some native hazel, some actually fruiting manzanita, Watermelon berry, currants, rose ships, raspberries, strawberries, frequently oysters, morels, hawk wings, puff balls, milky caps, chicken of the woods, chicken of the road, chanterelles too. Lots of different kinds of mushrooms I've found in the region. For someone like me, it's a wonderful paradise. I could disperse to camp there easily. That was where I went after these storms. No brainer. Now it was fall. Even if somewhat early fall, I knew that Yogi and Boo Boo were going to be out stuffing it for the winter. I carried my bear spray because of this, and my uncle's lever action 44 mag Henry. My girlfriend at the time was supposed to come too, but she couldn't get off work. Solo it was going to be. I figured I could practice some firecraft, maybe build a chair or a smoker or something, and just have a nice few days to myself. I went up early in the morning, hiked about 7 miles in, set up my shelter, and set up to enjoy the rare luxury of a real fire in Colorado. A while later, I started to do my stuff, set up a couple rods with bells, got out my baskets to forage, and set up my dryer and its shelter far away from my sleeping tarp. I was squelching around with my foraging gear out in a few minutes, and having an absolute blast. I was marching happily along, pretty much oblivious to anything else until dusk. Then I pulled out my headlamp and kept going well past what I should have. Damn did I get a good haul though. It was an incredible spread. I left plenty out for the woodland critters to enjoy too. I got back to my camp, started cleaning and drying the mushrooms, and didn't get to my dinner until about 1 in the morning. I caught two brook trout of reasonable size as well. Got them, let them hang out in a bug net near the creek for the next day. I figured it was cold enough that it would be okay. I got back to my little dinky tarp shelter around 3am. I went back inside, toweled off, and passed out. A day very happily spent. I woke up at around 10am or so the next day. The woods were eerily silent. No birds, no sound of bugs, not even the wind in the branches. Just the sound of a nearby brook gurgling and that was it. Usually, there'd be at least some animal sounds. I decided to be cautious when going about my business this time. My camp was exactly as I had left it, except for two things. First, there was a branch about two feet long, thick as my wrist, 
laid against a tree my pack was tied to. It had been gnawed on on both ends, sort of like a beaver, but the teeth marks looked different. I'd heard of beavers doing this before, but I'd never seen it myself. Somebody had to have left it there, but to what end, I had no idea. Unsettling? Sure. Freaky? Not really. I wasn't scared. Actually, my first thought was I must have accidentally picked it up and forgotten about it or something. Maybe I'd been playing around with it while fishing earlier or something like that and just forgotten. I went to collect those fish, speaking of. Hopefully, they'd still be there and not rotten or nasty yet. I got into sight of them, or rather, the bug nets they were in, and of course, they were gone. Bug net was loose but intact and empty. The fish heads were still hanging there, oddly enough, but the rest of the fish were gone. Okay, maybe another person stealing my things then. Somebody was really giving me the Scooby-Doo treatment. I had a bunch of charcoal left over from the fire. It was a nice big rock next to my fishing spot, so I scrawled a message on there. If you're hungry, next time stop by and say hi. I'll share my meal with you instead. I put an arrow pointing roughly towards my camp. I was more grumpy than anything. I guess they'd left that weird branch as a trade for my fish or something. I was very confused. I went to check on my collection of precious shrooms and my berry cooler. Lo and behold, everything was untouched. However, I hadn't swept out any of the debris beneath it. I mean, why bother? Well now, there was nothing underneath my tarp. It had been cleaned for me. Weird again. I started looking more seriously for some tracks and found nothing. I wasn't here to play junior detective though. I was here to frolic in the woodlands to my heart's content and collect unreasonable amounts of mushrooms. God damn it. I shook it off and went back to the creek to set up my lines again, only to notice my bells were now gone too. I couldn't remember if they had been there that morning or not. I assumed they must have been taken the previous night. I had only tied the rods to trees after all, so it was easy grabbing. I went back to my tarp, still confused as ever. I made some food, coffee, and decided to still go about my business. Now, here's a somewhat embarrassing thing I do. I know to make noise in the woods if bears are around, and I like to sing. It isn't the same as singing well, mind you. By and large, I sung whatever I'd been playing on the speakers at my job. Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Florence and the Machine, Lord, you get the picture. Don't judge me. This stuff is designed to be catchy. I went back on my rounds and find some more rare mushrooms. A rare treat, actually. Some fire morels and ash morels. I was really excited. Hundreds of them. Super late for them to show up in season two. They were my absolute favorite. I set out collecting some and kept myself company by singing. I was singing Bad Romance or something. All of a sudden, out in the woods, I heard what sounded like someone trying to harmonize with me. I'm a bass. This was a higher tenor or alto voice, muted by the distance a little. It was also completely and undeniably wrong. Scratchy, almost buzzy, weird syllables clipped and disjointed, a little off-key and off-rhythm as well. Basically, I'm pointing out it was very uncanny valley sounding. I shut up immediately and froze. The singing continued for a moment and then stopped as well. I was now experiencing a little bit of what my friends called pucker butt. I started to slowly reach back behind me for my Henry on its strap. I heard a sudden yelp or something, then some rustling from somewhere uphill of me behind the tree line. I took a few breaths, assuming I'd just freaked out the other party as much as they did me. I tried to force myself to relax. I kept these small binoculars on me. I took them out and scanned the tree line, but I couldn't see anything. This was probably whoever had taken my fish and my bells. Someone squatting out here in the woods, maybe. I was trying to keep my head on a swivel, but if they were going to be a problem, I feel like they would have already confronted me. They could have even taken a pot shot at me from the woods if they wanted to. It occurred to me finally that I may have just been hearing a weird echo or something. I convinced myself of this to give myself a bit more peace and calm than I had a few minutes before. Although, that didn't explain the yelp though. I guess it could have been a normal animal doing something in the woods though. Hooray for rationalizing things away. I decided that was enough mushrooms for now though. I didn't want to be drying them after dark after this experience. 
I headed back to camp and got to making that happen. Am I a moron? Maybe, possibly. I really didn't want to go home though. I was really having the time of my life here. I'd grown up in high deserts my whole life, and getting to see so much green that late in the year was a real treat. I wanted to stay. Creepy bullshit be damned. I'd had moments where my brain had tricked me in the past. I talked myself into believing that was happening once more. I kept on singing to myself, this time a bit more quietly than before though. Then it happened again though, from somewhere a bit closer this time. That weird buzzy higher voice joined in. I felt the bottom drop out of my stomach. I know this probably just sounds creepy because I thought I was alone, but it's hard to convey just how off sounding this voice was too. They were fairly close to what I had been singing but like it was coming out of a culvert or something. Just buzzy and clicking and hoarse sounding, like something was wrong with their throat. I was not having this at all. I shut up immediately again. This time I pulled my gun off my back and searched around me. This had to be someone fucking with me now. Not unheard of for good foraging spots, but this was my first time. The singing continued for a moment again after I stopped. Uphill, further in the woods, and definitely in a direction I hadn't been in yet. I called out and announced myself. I asked them to answer me. Nothing. Complete silence now. Since I was listening a bit closer too, I noticed it once more. No animal sounds, no bugs buzzing. My head felt a little bit hazy. I was beginning to get really concerned now. It even looked like a storm might be rolling in too. Bingo. I headed a bit over to a clearing nearby, and for sure I could see a storm rolling in. As always, it was hard to judge the speed. It wouldn't be a bad idea to reconfigure my tarp though, and consider taking shelter early. Again, now with a little more peace with the voice and presence gone. I figured any more bullshit from my neighbor in a bad thunderstorm was going to be far less likely. I went back to my fishing rods and looked out. I had caught an even bigger trout than the night before. I collected some water for the next day, packed up my foraging stuff, lashed it all to a trunk, and decided to call it there before dusk and the storm was on its way in. I set up my tarp lower to the ground, a more wind-resistant configuration. I set up a spare older one as a kind of rain fly over the entrance as well. It's worth noting this was a fairly thin setup facing the clearing, since the worst of the wind would be coming from there. It pretty much blocked my view. I did another Widowmaker check though. All good, made some hot cocoa and tucked in, just as it was starting to come down. And it came down real hard. I had to put in earplugs to keep my ears from being hurt by the lightning. It was very frequent and loud. I didn't stay particularly dry, and I didn't get much sleep either. It was already one of the most unpleasant and awe-inspiring nights I'd ever had in the wild. Somewhere in the middle of the night though, I thought I felt something bounce off my tarp, kind of behind me. Not weird, it happens sometimes in storms. A few minutes later though, I saw something else. A stone, about the size of my fist, bouncing off the tarp, off the rain fly and landing right in front of me. I turned my headlamp on. Sure as shit, it was a rock. Not just any rock either. A rock from the river. Rocks don't just fall off trees. If this storm had picked this round one up from the river, it should have been airborne. Another one, a few minutes later. Somebody was throwing rocks at me. What should I do? Investigate? I had my gun on me and if shit was gonna go down, I was about as ready as I could ever be. I turned my headlamp back off. Then I got treated to pretty much the most awe-inspiring amount of lightning I'd ever seen in my life. The sky was lit up for seconds at a time. My earplugs couldn't even protect me from the thunder. My ears were ringing. I kept seeing the trees from the edge of the tree line and the clearing projected in shadowy form over my rain fly, dancing this way and that. I couldn't look away. At one moment though as the lightning was flashing, I clearly saw what looked just like a person, hiding in the tree line, outlined against the trees and my rain fly by the lightning. They were walking strangely, not running from cover to cover, but kind of strolling back and forth like a drunk person, trying to be sneaky. The silhouette wasn't bulky. For some reason, I got the impression they weren't wearing clothes at all. The figure stopped. Whether or not they were facing me, I couldn't quite tell you. 
but I felt watched right now and very exposed. The figure stood there behind a tree, swaying back and forth, maybe being pushed around by the winds even. I got little glimpses here and there as the lightning flashed. They didn't appear to be doing anything, but standing there and staring at my tent, it was pretty freaky. I readied my gun in front of me. I then had another rock land on my tarp, bounce off and land right in front of me. This was a bad moment. The lightning stopped for just a moment. The thunder died down too. I had a horrible, slow realization that there might be more than one person out there. Then I heard cutting through the ringing in my ears and the momentary silence, clear as it had been earlier, but sounding much closer. The singing of that song I had been singing before. Then it was nothing. I looked back and realized the figure was now not being projected by the lightning anymore. Now that there was a lull, there was complete darkness. I just remember thinking I was fucked to myself in my head. Basically, I was going to have to crawl out of my tarp to get on my feet even. There was no way I was going to be able to stay there anymore. I counted down from ten. I rushed out as quickly as I could and readied my gun once more. I yelled out into the forest. You better stop messing with me. I'm armed. I was not in a good headspace. I was as freaked out as I could have been at this point. This was not that long after another creepy experience in the woods. I was about ready to shit myself. I looked around the back of my tent with my light and didn't see anything. Nobody. Just rain raining down. I walked a bit further. I couldn't see anybody still. I could clearly see into the clearing until my light got swallowed up by the rain. I walked around the edge of my little camp, patrolling and sticking close to my tent. I couldn't make out any figures. I wish I could say I checked out the tree line too, but I was too scared. I tried to yell again, but my voice was locked up in my throat. All of a sudden, another rock flew and landed right next to my foot. Bounced off, actually. I won't lie to you, I lost it in that moment. I fired my gun into the dirt about ten feet in front of me. I could hear some rustling out in the woods, uphill from me yet again. I yelled some dumb panicked bullshit. I ducked back into my tarp and wrapped up as much as I could huddled up with my gun. Eventually the storm broke, followed by dawn. I packed up my shit and rushed out of there. I was pretty shaky. It took me a while to get all my various gear and my shelter as well. I took a few moments to look at the stones that had been thrown at me. They were really thick. When I went to grab the last of my things, I noticed there were two little sections of wood with chewed ends, stripped just like before leaning against the trunk right next to my tent. Nope, not okay. It took me a second to get my things. I was that freaked out that I was now afraid of simple sticks. One the first night, two the second? No, fuck that. I got myself under control, only to notice a powerful sense of being watched. I shook off the cover, packed it in a dry bag, and turned around to get the hell out of there. Then I saw a whole, very dead rabbit on the back edge of my camp. The rain had washed off any leakage that would have been on it, but the carcass was splayed out there, like somebody had thrown it at me and it had bounced off. It was fresh enough it didn't stink. I won't paint you any more of the picture. I was instantly and totally numb. At that point, I just panicked and fled from there. I readied my gun the entire way too and jogged pointing it out into the forest until I couldn't anymore. I breathlessly walked the rest of the way back to my car. I got in, drove about 20 minutes, and then had to pull over and throw up as I had a panic attack. I've never been back there alone, and definitely not unarmed. Like many, I've been quarantining in my house in California mostly spending the time hopping on work calls and gaining a bunch of weight. One night last month, though, it was around 10.30 and I was simply eating dinner. I live in a rural area where houses are spaced much farther apart. The main town square has got to be at least two miles from where I live. That's where the police department is as well. So suddenly, I get a knock at the door. Odd at this hour, but I opened it anyways. I was expecting a package at the time. Instead of a package though, there were three men dressed in these dirty yellow hazmat suit things with face shields as well. 
I was obviously taken aback. I mumbled something like, uh, hello? One guy was holding a clipboard and introduced themselves as a disinfection team sent by the county. Groups of them had apparently been going around the towns in that county to inspect the houses and make sure they were sanitized or whatever. I was not buying this. I asked them to give me a moment. I shut the door and called my neighbor. I asked him about this disinfection team. He told me it must be a scam and to ask for a warrant or call the cops right away. I went back to the door only to see the men were now gone. I walked out into my driveway, completely baffled. I glanced up and down the street. No cars in sight either, just the warm night air. I contemplated calling the police for a moment, but I didn't think it was worth it. I went back inside and simply locked all my windows and doors instead, heading upstairs to watch some TV. About an hour later, still watching TV, I began to hear things falling over in my backyard on the patio. I heard it clear as day because the patio was right below my bedroom window, which had been left wide open. I was too scared to check it out myself. Instead, I stuck my head out the window to look around a bit. I nearly died on the spot when I saw one of those same men in the hazmat suits messing with my back door. I reacted as quickly as I could. Hey asshole, the cops are already on their way. That sure got his attention. He yelled something unintelligible and hopped the backyard fence. I saw those two other fuckers running from around the side of my house. They jumped the fence too and ran off into the woods beyond my home. I picked up my phone from the nightstand and called my local police, explaining the situation. Because of the bright yellow in their figures, I could see them disappearing farther out into the woods. The cops came and we made a creepy discovery. The two guys who had been at the side of my house had been trying to pry my dining room window open with a crowbar. I asked them if they could check for fingerprints. I shit you not. One of the officers responded with, What, you think we're the CIA or something? That really pissed me off. It seemed small town police officers really don't give a shit. At least the ones where I live don't. After I insisted, it turned out the men had been wearing gloves anyways, so I guess it didn't matter. Let this be a lesson, and I hope no one else will fall victim to this kind of scam. This happened three nights ago, and I'm going crazy trying to figure out what it's about. I had just moved into a new apartment one month ago. I'm still unpacking even and settling in. I'd been using my parents' address as my mailing address. They lived a few towns over about 20 minutes away. I'd been doing so all my life pretty much. Just three nights ago, my parents called me at 2am, freaked out, and proceeded to tell me this story. Apparently, at 1 in the morning, someone began frantically banging on their front door and repeatedly ringing their doorbell. My stepdad walked downstairs and opened the door, leaving the front door locked and closed. There was a man standing outside, who looked to be in his 30s, a black hoodie on with the hood pulled up all the way over his face. He didn't have any distinguishing features, facial hair or tattoos. The only thing my stepdad said was that he looked to be Hispanic. Neither of my parents recognized the man. The man started by saying this, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for my full name. My stepdad played dumb and asked him who that was. The man proceeded to state my full name again and told them that my boyfriend was worried because I didn't come home that night. He claimed to be a friend of my boyfriend and told my stepdad they were both out looking for me, worried because I hadn't showed up. I don't have a boyfriend. I live by myself with my three dogs and haven't been in a relationship in quite a long time. Here's the weirdest part though. My stepdad asked the guy what boyfriend he was talking about. The man told him the exact full name of a boyfriend I'd had when I was in 10th grade, nearly 20 years ago. He said my high school boyfriend's name a few more times to ensure my stepdad heard him and repeated that they were very worried about me. Was my stepdad sure I was not inside? At this point, of course, my stepdad was weirded out. He slammed the door and locked it in the guy's face. 
but the man didn't leave. He lingered in front of my parents' house for several minutes, smoking cigarettes and calling someone on the phone. Finally, my parents called the cops. About five minutes before the police arrived, the man walked down to a dead end on their block and drove away in a nondistinct silver car. The car also didn't have a license plate. My parents filed a police report, but nothing else happened. After I heard this story, I'm going nuts over the weird details. How would someone know who I dated nearly 20 years ago? And what would the motive be of making up a story that included that weird detail about my past? I've not been in contact with that particular guy in over a decade. Yesterday, I decided to message him on Facebook to see if this had anything to do with him. I told him the whole story and he was just as confused as I was. He even claimed to have no part in it and showed me proof of what he was doing as well. I'm at a complete loss. I'm also really freaked out some strange man is going through so much trouble at 1am to search for me. Any insight or ideas would be greatly appreciated. Thankfully, nothing weird has happened since then.